Now, <clears throat> as I said, we're having a special communion service, which is why the pulpit is gone, and we have this lovely table here. And I will be sharing a message that will probably take about 10 to 15 minutes, short and sweet, and then we'll go off and we'll do a uh, foot washing service, come back, and then share the communion side of things. So before I start, I would like to start off with a prayer, and then we'll get straight into our communion service for today. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we want to thank you so much for your love. We want to thank you so much for your sacrifice. And I look around and Easter is starting to build up. And so we think it's a good time to start remembering the true reason for Easter, which is your sacrifice. And so we pray as we share this time together, may we be able to grow and learn and also to feel your presence is our prayer in your name. Amen. Now, medicine... Medicine has come a long way in the 21st century. We have pills for all sorts of things. We have vaccines. We have all the different types of things that you can go to a pharmacist and grab. But we also have great surgery. We have so many advances in the scientific field. But one place that science has maybe even taken a step backwards is in mental health. There is a lot to be desired when it comes to treating a lot of mental health diseases. But the reason why I mention this is because there is one thing that's happening in a country called Zimbabwe over in Africa who probably have it almost together when it comes to treating mental health. Let me share with you what they do. It's called the Friendship Bench. Has anyone heard of the Friendship Bench before? Great. Great. So they go to the mental institutions and they go and what they do is they provide and fund a bench that goes inside and outside the facility. There are a few in the foyer, there's some outside in nature. And all they do is they hire grandmothers, it have to be grandmothers, and they sit on the bench and sit with a patient for six months. That's it. And they've just got to talk. And what they've found over many years of doing this treatment, and I call it a treatment because it works, is they found that 86% of patients who go through the friendship bench experience come out after six months with zero depressive symptoms. 86%. Now, there's nothing like that in the, in the mental health industry at all. In fact, they saw that if they didn't do the friendship bench and they did all the other drugs and, and procedures from the mental institution, it was a 50-50 split. It was almost a flip of a coin, whether or not you would feel better after six months or not. But you added a friendship bench and you sat down with a few old ladies, some grannies, and had a chat. Apparently, that almost fixes the problem. Not expensive, and very, very simple. All they did were they were meant to be friends to the patients. The reason why I share this is because friendship in itself is always on the back burner when it comes to anything important in our lives. If you look in the Bible, you'll notice that there are four types of love in the Greek. Of course, in English, we have one word, love. But in the Greek, they split it up into four different categories. Now, you may have heard this before. Agape love is godly love, self-sacrificial love. Eros is the romantic love you have with your partner. Storge is the familial love, the one between brother and sister, husband and wife and kids. But there's one that always gets left behind, and it's the philia love, the friendship type of love. Now, if you know, you will see in the Western world, what type of love do we like to talk about and show and, and put to the screens a lot? Which one of those four? Eros. Why is it Eros? You go to the magazine stands and you see the, the scantily clad people or something about a romance that has gone a sour, something to do with that love of Eros. In fact, I always bring this up, but does anyone know what my favorite movie of all time is? I've probably brought it up almost every third or fourth sermon. What is it? No, it's not Sleeping Beauty. I'm a Kiwi, and I like trilogies. Lord of the Rings, thank you. Lord of the Rings, if you've ever read the book, it's a very thick book, and they try to 
put it down into three movies. Now, of course, if you've seen the extended edition of Lord of the Rings, you'll know that it's not a very small amount of time. They have about six hours per, per movie. So because there's a lot of content, but something you may not know. If you've seen the movie, there are a few romantic, I guess, stories, right? With, with someone like Arwen and Aragorn or others. Now, if you read the book, you may notice something. The romance is not front and center in the story. In fact, the most important part of Lord of the Rings is the friendship between who? Frodo and Sam. But for some reason, when Hollywood had to put it in a movie, they had to add romance to it because they thought that if we just focused on the friendship portion, people are not going to watch this. We need to add some romance. The romance that they put at the front of the movie is actually in the appendices of the book. It wasn't even that important to Tolkien. But for some reason in the Western world, Hollywood, we need to put this eros love to grab people's attention. Now, the Western world, that's us. In the Eastern world, what part of love do we like to focus on? Family. Store J. It's all about family honor and respect. It's all about the family that is the center of the universe. And that's not a bad thing. But family is front and center. And so we get to philia, which is friendship love. And C.S. Lewis actually says this. He says, out of the four loves, philia is the least natural but most rewarding of loves. Now, you may know some great friendships in the Bible. David and Jonathan, Moses and Aaron, Elijah and Elisha, Naomi and Ruth. And of course, Jesus and his disciples. And this idea that even Jesus, who was the Son of God, who was perfect, still felt the need to have friends. Even when you read in the Bible that Jesus not only had his 12 disciples, but he had an inner circle even more closer to him, who was Peter, James, and John. Jesus felt the importance of friends. This idea of belonging and being connected is so strong, in fact, that it can be one of the biggest fears that people can have, which is being alone. I know a lot of people, when we as pastors go to the hospital bed, and people may be able to see the end in sight, and one of the scariest things for them, more often than not, is to pass away alone. They need people around them. Has anyone seen the movie Les Miserables? Yeah? I've never seen it because I've been told that it's just singing. And I, I need some talking in my movies. But I read, and please correct me if I'm wrong because I've never seen this. Apparently it's a book as well. That there is a story about a young noble who is in love with another woman, noble, and they are sending each other letters. And between those two, there is a young girl who's poor and doesn't have much going for her at all. And she falls in love with the nobleman because she's reading the messages as well. And anyway, the story goes on that she finds out that she's sick and she's dying. And so she goes and she starts dying on the bed. And the nobleman finds out and comes to her bedside as she is passing away. And the nobleman asks the girl, what can I do for you? What's something that I can do for you to make this better? And she says this. She says, when I pass, can you please kiss my forehead? It's really sad, but it's also really quite poignant, right? That even at death, she wanted to know that someone was by her side giving her some love. She needed that feeling that someone cared for her even if that love was not responded in the same way. Now, you might be asking the question, what on earth has this got to do with communion, Dan? And I'll tell you. What does the word communion mean? Anyone ever thought about this? Is to what? To commune. What does commune mean? To do things together. We just think of the word communion as bread and wine and foot washing and it represents all those things. But the literal word of communion means to come together and do things together. In fact, the Oxford Dictionary says, the sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings 
especially on a mental or spiritual level. Here's the part, church family. You cannot do communion without community. You need people to do communion with because if you do this without anyone else, it is not communion. It's only with yourself. And that's okay. But there's a reason why communion is meant to be with people. Have you thought about it this way? Jesus died for many reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is that he died for his friends. John 15, 13 says this, Greater love has no one than this, to lay one's life down for what? For his friends. His last moments, those last days that Jesus knew he was going to have to sacrifice himself, he could have gone away and spent the whole time with his Father in heaven. He could have found a place of solitude. He could have stayed there until he needed to go and just be in grief with his Father. Or he could have just grabbed his family, his mum and the siblings and, and everyone that was close to him and go away and just spend a few days on vacation with them before he had to do what he needed to do. I know that's probably what I would do. But no, Jesus chooses to spend his last moments with his friends, with his disciples, with the people that he cared for. And they came together and they washed each other's feet they ate bread and grape juice and other things, and they tried to understand what needed to take place. None of them understood, but they knew something was going to happen. Now you come 2,000 years later where we are, and we're sitting down together in a church waiting for the pastor to finish his message so that they can go and do what needs to be done. But we're doing exactly the same thing that Jesus did in the upper room. We're sitting together, we're washing each other's feet, we're eating the bread and the grape juice, and we're understanding what needed to take place that very long time ago when Jesus gave his life for us. There is a reason why we are told to do this together. It's because we're all on a journey together. Just like Kian and Rhea are having their wedding and they could go off and they could do it all on their own without any support. They could do a runaway where they go to a different country, start their own life. I hope they're not going to do that. But they'll be surrounded with friends and family that care about them the most. And they need the support because moments like this need support from church family, from real family, from friends, from people that they love. And the same thing is the same for us. We're all on our own journey as Christians. We're all in different places, and yet we need the help of our peers and our friends to go alongside this journey with us. That is called philia love. So let me read this verse to you, and then I will release you to go and, and, and wash each other's feet. But this is John 15, verses 15 to 17. Two verses after the verse we talked about with the greatest love being one who lays their life down for their friends. And I'm going to say it to you, one Turner Church. One Turner. No longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you, one Turner Church. One Turner, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. So, One Turner, these things I command you, that you love one another. This is a command from God to say that we must as a church, love, support, journey together as we remember Christ's sacrifice and practice what we call communion with friends. We now are going to be moving on to the next phase of our communion experience. If you've never done this before, then just follow suit. There is a couple section there is a male section and there's a female section. The couples are in the hall. 
I think if I get this right, I'm looking for Pam, but I know where she is. One, Pam, the men are in the long room and the women are in the other side of the long room. Okay, great. So if you will, we have music. We have a children's story as well from Simone if you want the kids to stay here during that time. And again, if you do not feel comfortable, if this is a scary kind of time for you, we totally understand. You're more than welcome to stay here as we do the foot washing and we come back and we share the bread and the grape juice. Thank you, guys. Let's go.